telling somebody about Christ is actually easy for us here in this city or actually in the United States because we all talk the same language. When our missionaries, our team, part of the local church here, when Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, he meant for every local church to reach out to all the world. Not physically can't go out. And you can't even touch all the nations. That's the reason why we partner team up and have missionaries. They're an extension. They're, they're part of us. We're part of them so that we can reach the whole world. The elderly man's face that was shown up here. You look at him, you see an old man wrinkled, like you said. One thing that crossed my mind is when I got saved, it was during the invitation time. I can remember the preacher, and I didn't even listen to the message. All I wanted to do was go home, watch sports. That's all I wanted to do, get out of church. I wanted to go to church, but I come out, you know, like this. But I remember the preacher saying, are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? That's the only thing I've heard throughout the whole message. And it just, it just, at that point, I knew there was something wrong in my life. When they go out to New Tribes Missions and they go out and reach these people, they can't go in there and say, hey, I just want to tell you, Katie, all of sin comes short of the glory of God. They, uh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. They, they, they can't talk like that. You've got to learn language. They, these people don't speak Spanish. They don't speak English. They speak in their home little world. And the first thing you've got to do is learn their culture, their type of people. You're foreigners. You're strangers. And they go in there and they learn these languages. And sometimes it takes years and years just to do that. And then they get to tell them about the gospel once they learn their words, their language, their grammar, and so on. So it's so important. You never think, when you think about missionaries, you think about Brother Earl goes to Russia and he talks to them in their language and everything's fine and people get saved. It's, it's not always like that. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's families like them that help us. If we help them with support and they help us by reaching the world to do what God has done. That's what God wants us to do. Amen? Yeah. Now, I want to share something with you real quick, like, and then we're going to close. And I want to see if everybody understands this. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. Everybody in here, including myself, are sinners. Okay? If you understand that, everybody say amen. Amen. Okay, we're all sinners. Okay. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. This word dead actually means hell. In other words, because of sin, we all deserve hell. That's what it says. For the wages of sin is... So every sinner, we all say we're all sinners, so all sinners deserve hell. But then it says, for the wages of sin is death. But, if I say but, but the gift of God, if I say gift, yeah. it says, but the gift of God. God gave us a gift. But the gift of God is eternal life. In other words, salvation, a home in heaven, so that when we die physically here on earth, we can go to heaven. So the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay. All of sin, amen? Okay. And all deserve hell, amen? Amen. But God gave us a gift, amen? Amen. And He gave us a gift of His Son, amen? So that we can have a home in heaven. Amen. Very good. And then it also says, for anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It also says that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay. A lot of verses here. Let's, let's do some Alabama talk. Let's keep it down home with us. Okay? Amen? Amen? Amen. We're all sinners. We all deserve hell. But if we go to the Lord in prayer and we ask Him and we truly mean it from the heart and we ask Him to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness, the Bible says that He will save us. If we trust in Christ and what He did on the cross, and 
be buried and resurrected from If we truly believe that, not just intellectually, but believe it from the heart, he says, thou shalt be saved. If that makes sense, say amen. amen. If you understood that, say amen. amen. That might take years and years and years to do that in places that they're in. Just to get that across. We get it in what? Just a couple of minutes. Here's the question today. Okay, let's lay this to the side for a minute. If you're here this morning, have you ever received Christ as your son? If not, maybe you need to come to sport. Maybe, maybe God's calling you to sport and say, you know what? I need to be a son. I want to David continue to be with coming. We're going to sing an invitation here, just as I am. Okay? What number? 342. Okay? But maybe you're here this morning and you've never received Christ as your Savior. Why not today? You say, well, what is everybody going to think? If I come forward and say, Brother Mike, I need to be saved. Who cares? This is your life and your eternal life. Amen? Amen. It's, it's your life. You're responsible for your life. I'm responsible for mine. And we're all responsible for God. Maybe you're here this morning you've been saved. Maybe you've never followed up to baptism. Does baptism save? No. Do you have to get baptized in heaven? No. There's something about doing what God wants us to do. You know, even Jesus got baptized. He was perfect. But he got baptized. Why? Because he set the example. And he said, go into all nations, teach them, witness them, and baptize them. That goes for the local church. That goes for us. So you got a responsibility after you're saved to be baptized. Christ set the example. Amen? Maybe you're here this morning and say, you know what, I've been saved, but I need to take that next step. I need to say, I'm going to be baptized. Maybe you're here this morning and you've been saved, you've been baptized. Maybe God's calling you here. You know, you've been a visitor or you're not a member of the church. You come. Maybe God's calling you to, to draw this side. But this is where God wants you to come. Do what God wants you to do. As, as we say in the world, do the right thing. Just do what God wants you to do. Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe he's touched your heart here. Maybe God's calling you to be a missionary. Maybe you need to come this morning. Maybe you just need to come to the altar and pray. I don't know. All I'm saying is, let's just do what God wants us to do. Amen? And I don't want to leave here without giving all of us that opportunity. So I'm going to ask you, if you would, to stand. And we're going to sing just as I am, because... This is an old hymn. Many of you are familiar with it. But I can't think of any better words than God says. You know, so many people say, well, I need to do this, and I need to do that, and I need to do this, and I need to check. No, no, no. God wants you just as you are right now. Just as you are. So if you need to come this morning for whatever reason, don't look at your neighbor, don't look at the person. You just do what God calls you to do. Even Jesus said, I'm doing my Father's work.